Professor Dörte, thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Um, I want to start us off um, with your personal experiences. And you first visited Korea in 1967, a completely different country than it is today. Um, could you get, describe your first impressions when you arrived? Yes, indeed. Uh, South Korea was a very different country then from today, of course. Uh, it was uh, it was, in a sense, a culture shock when I arrived in Seoul. Uh, Seoul was, uh, of course, built up, but that uh, it was close. This was rather close after uh, the end of the Korean War, and therefore one uh, saw still the, the scars of war everywhere, and the buildings. Uh, uh, which uh, have been built up since then, were all kind of flintily uh, built uh, buildings. And uh, the atmosphere uh, atmosphere uh, was quite, uh, quite subdued still. Uh, people uh, lived very simply. Uh, I had trouble to find an adequate uh, place to, to live. I was lucky uh, to find a tiny, tiny um, uh, room in an old Korean house um, and where I also could eat. So that was also another uh, problem. Uh, there were hardly any restaurants and certainly not a restaurants where a Western woman alone could go. Um, so the, the beginnings, the first few months uh, of, that, of my life in Korea were very tough. Um, fortunately, I did have um, friends uh, and family, uh, so they helped me to kind of settle in. Uh, but the first, uh, the greatest and most important uh, obstacle to really feel at home in uh, South Korea was, of course, my lack of um, language ability. Uh, I could uh, read uh, Korean to a certain extent, uh, but uh, that was all scholarly uh, literature and not everyday speech. And so the first thing I had to do is to get uh, a Korean teacher. And that was also very difficult uh, because at that time there were no textbooks. So we started out reading a novel and that was of course much too difficult for me. Uh, and so I really had a, a tough time uh, to, uh, to try to communicate with the people because in the library, I was actually uh, in Korea to do library work in the old uh, Royal Library. Uh, and uh, my, my documents um, at that time uh, on the uh, diplomatic history of Korea uh, in the late 19th century, uh, those documents were all written in Chinese. So I didn't need really uh, Korean uh, for my, for my uh, uh, research. However, of course, I didn't do only research in the library. I wanted to go out and, and especially uh, I, um, I tried to go to the countryside as much as possible because uh, Seoul was not westernized in, in any sense, uh, but nevertheless, it, it was a different uh, uh, speed of uh, development uh, already uh, then uh, discernible. And so uh, the countryside was really left as, uh, as it was presumably during the Japanese colonial period. Uh, so this uh, was a, a very great, the greatest uh, experience I had was really in the countryside where I could watch uh, some of these old rituals, these Confucian rituals. You see uh, one picture uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the front page, uh, front cover. Uh, of my recent book, and uh, uh, and that exactly, yeah. Uh, so uh, you you see there uh, a group of uh, of women all uh, uh, dressed in the old uh, Korean dress, something of that sort you would not see anymore today, of course. Um, so this uh, this uh, direct uh, witnessing of domestic rituals. Uh, in the countryside uh, encouraged me to, uh, to study more of um, religious um, religion, uh, of rituals, of Confucian rituals. And uh, therefore, uh, I, my last book, the, uh, Under the uh, Ancestors' Eyes, uh, 
shows very much how these rituals then were integrated uh, into uh, the uh, original Korean society. You uh, studied uh, religious rituals. Um, we are talking about Confucianism. So I yeah. think because it's often debated if Confucianism actually is a religion or not, maybe you could uh, introduce a little bit about Confucianism in Korea in particular and um, what impact it had on, on its society. Yes, uh, of course, uh, Korean, uh, Korea was originally not uh, Confucian. Uh, it was Buddhist during the Korea ta uh, times uh, up to the, um, the uh, late um, 14th century. Korea was really a, a Buddhist country. But then uh, in the late 14th century, uh, Neo-Confucianism was introduced to Korea uh, from, uh, from the Yuan dynasty, the dynasty which at that time occupied or uh, was in, in power uh, in uh, China. And so the, uh, uh, some of the Korean uh, scholars who went to uh, Beijing uh, to, uh, uh, on uh, diplomatic missions and so on, they, uh, they, got, uh, uh, they got to know uh, the uh, Confucianism and, uh, and especially the so-called Neo-Confucianism, a, a synthesis uh, of uh, various uh, um, streams of thought, um, which uh, actually dates back to the Song uh, dynasty uh, in, uh, in uh, China. And so uh, these uh, uh, Korean, um, these Chinese uh, classics were introduced. And uh, you, you probably know uh, that uh, from the late 14th, 14th to the early 15th uh, century, there was a great change uh, in Korea. There was a change of dynasty from Goryeo dynasty to the Joseon dynasty. And the Joseon dynasty was really established on the premises of Neo-Confucianism. Uh, especially if I say Confucianism, uh, whether it's a, re a religion or anything else, uh, that uh, is not important here. Uh, the, the most important was the introduction of this very old Chinese classics, like uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, book of rituals or the book of Cho, uh, where uh, the uh, pre uh, the pre modern uh, Chinese uh, history, the ancient uh, society, uh, 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 Chinese society um, was depicted. And the Koreans believed that if they reproduce uh, the uh, recipes, so to speak, uh, of these Chinese classics uh, in, uh, in Korea, they would be able to uh, reestablish order and uh, a, uh, be able to introduce uh, a new uh, dynasty uh, in uh, Korea. So it was a very, very uh, complicated uh, process and which actually lasted for almost 200 years probably. Uh, I always um, contend uh, that the uh, Confucianization of Korea lasted at least 200 years. Because of course, uh, they are uh, at the beginning of the Joseon dynasty in the 15th century, uh, there were many uh, new, new laws, how people had to behave, how uh, the structure of the family had to change, how their rituals, especially the rituals, ancestor worship had to change uh, to make it a Confucian uh, society. But of course, uh, uh, if I just may uh, say some, uh, something which is very important and which is hardly ever mentioned uh, in any history book, uh, the biggest change was, of course, uh, the Goryeo society. In other words, the pre-Confucian society was a bilateral society. In other words, dissent uh, was uh, derived from both father and mother. It was bilateral. Whereas, of course, the uh, uh, Chinese society, ancient Chinese society was always a patrilineal society. So descent was uh, reckoned only from the father. The mother did not play any, any role. But in Korea, uh, this is uh, quite different. Of course, in the, co in the course of time, uh, the uh, Korean society 
changed from this bilateral society into a patrilineal society, but uh, uh, ever uh, until, until today, uh, the mother side also plays a very important role, especially for the elites. Uh, the elite uh, 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 identification had to show uh, that I had an uh, elite father as well as an elite mother. In other words, uh, the uh, descent was patrilineal, whereas the, I, the status identification was still through father and mother. This plays a very important role in uh, Korea. Uh, and it, this, um, uh, this uh, aspect differs very much from Chinese society. Therefore, uh, some people think through Confucianism, Korea became a kind of a Chinese-like society. That's not at all true. Uh, Korea is a very special society. And this is one of the most important um, changes from this bilateral uh, society into a patrilineal uh, society. And unfortunately, even in Korea, uh, people do not appreciate it uh, enough to show how, uh, how unique uh, this is. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this kind of change uh, from, from a bilateral society into a uh, patrilineal society, you cannot observe anywhere else in the world. Uh, so this is a very uniquely Korean, and uh, especially it's uh, it's so fascinating, and that is what fascinated me at the time, uh, that you can document this. There are documents which show you, uh, uh, which uh, uh, show this. So you, uh, it's not just uh, kind of a theoretical um, uh, talk, uh, but it's uh, it's it's there in the uh, in the in the documents. And uh, that um, uh, when I first was in Korea in 1967, uh, I actually was um, still working on the diplomatic history of Korea in the 19th century when Japan started to encroach on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, but um, sooner or later, um, through my experiences in the countryside, I got more interested in social history and especially this domestic rituals I, I could witness and photograph uh, too. Maybe to jump in there, um, could you describe some of the rituals you, you, were, you were witnessing in the countryside that apparently survived from the early 15th century uh, until late 20th century? even through, uh, I mean, the Japanese um, occupation was really thorough also throughout society in Korea, but apparently these social structures and the family structure uh, did survive uh, quite good. Maybe you could describe it on, on one of the rituals you were witnessing, how, how this is practiced, this Confucianism and the, the, the yeah, well, ancestor yeah. worship. Yeah, ancestor worship, of course, uh, on uh, on uh, January the first, and then of course, uh, as you probably know, uh, know the uh, the uh, uh, the autumn uh, the autumn moon festival on the fifth uh, from the lunar calendar of the fifteenth of the eighth month, uh, usually uh, around the end of uh, September which is still celebrated very much. And on that occasion, um, you also celebrate uh, your ancestry. The ancestry uh, descent from whom you dis descended uh, is very important, even today. Um, people immediately ask, uh, who is your father? Who is your grandfather? What is your ancestral background in order to kind of situate uh, you uh, in, in society? Uh, so I witnessed um, on the, uh, the, uh, the 1st of January uh, and uh, in the, uh, on Chuseok in the uh, 15th of um, the 8th uh, lunar, uh, um, lunar month, I witnessed uh, these uh, large rituals in front of the sadang, of the ancestral shrine. And the ancestral shrine, in the ancestral shrine, you find uh, the, uh, the uh, ancestor tablets uh, for four generations, sometimes only three generations, sometimes four generations of your ancestors. 
uh, and uh, the 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 uh, descendants of these uh, four generations uh, the ancestors come together and in front uh, and stand in front whereas the uh, in inside uh, the uh, the shrine uh, the the eldest son of the main descent line of this whole group uh, is the uh, so-called the ritual uh, the ritual um, uh, practitioner uh, he uh, he produces the uh, the ritual of course with uh, all kinds of uh, uh, um, food which is brought in from a special uh, kitchen at the time <laughs> and uh, the people uh, then uh, take part of this ritual but uh, after the end of this ritual uh, in front of the uh, Sadam of the ancestral shrine, uh, the, this man, of course, only man attend this. Uh, I was actually superfluous, but I was allowed to photograph. So that was my contribution. But then uh, after, the, uh, after the ritual in the, in the Sadam, in the ancestral shrine, uh, the men go uh, to the main hall uh, of the residence. Uh, of this uh, chosen of the oldest uh, ritual heir, uh, and uh, they uh, eat uh, the contributions, uh, the 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 rice, the the, the meat, uh, the fruit, and so on, and the soup, uh, uh, which had been uh, given uh, to the ancestors, uh, and uh, they consume that, and it, it's the belief. Uh, it's called umok. It's called uh, to uh, in, imbibe uh, the uh, uh, good luck. Uh, so this uh, uh, ritual food, which was already partaken uh, by uh, the ancestors during the ancestor worship, uh, they uh, give uh, some certain strength. Uh, and also it creates a community of these uh, descendants um, uh, who are assembled uh, in uh, the main hall of the uh, main uh, uh, main house, the, the Tonga, uh, in, in the in the in the in the men's quarters. Uh, so it's uh, very important uh, this ritual, uh, and that is um, one of my major uh, points. Uh, Actually, this uh, how was this patrilineal pattern uh, introduced in Korea from from such a very alien uh, bilateral uh, society, uh, namely through ancestor worship, through uh, through uh, common uh, rites rituals, uh, and uh, this uh, then the this group was. Uh, um, structured patrilineally, and so uh, these uh, people started to to know each other as uh, as a special as a special group, and slowly, slowly, um, and it took, as I said, uh, more than two hundred years. You can talk actually of a, a Confucian society in Korea only from the seventeenth century on. Uh, so uh, this uh, this. Uh, community of, of kinsmen uh, who uh, who partake uh, the ancestral food uh, they do not only uh, get a uh, kind of a, uh, a, co a community spirit uh, through this uh, action but also uh, they uh, talk of course about uh, this this group the the the, the problems of this group uh, for example, uh, the uh, the uh, com compilation of a genealogy of a uh, of a uh, exact uh, uh, exact data uh, on this group uh, written down uh, in a gene genealogy. So, it's uh, ancestor worship has many many aspects. It's not only religious in, in that sense or semi-religious. Uh, 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 people do think that uh, the uh, ancestral spirits will uh, are present at the time, uh, but uh, this is not really uh, what, what we in the West would call religious. Um, but uh, uh, 
uh, so this uh, this ancestor worship uh, is a very important uh, action uh, for the kinship group, and uh, and this ancestor worship it's also uh, despite the Christianity uh, of uh, in uh, uh, in recent times uh, has survived. Of course, the Christians are not um, uh, conducting uh, uh, ancestor worship anymore. Sometimes in a, in a certain way in the church. Uh, especially the Catholic Church, um, but uh, most of uh, those traditional kind of families uh, do uh, practice uh, this ancestor worship until today. And um, you said like the this patrilineal uh, descent group structures this community and reinforces it, the community through, through this, these rituals. And right. I imagine them to have also more responsibility towards each other and to, to, to bring the discussion to nowadays because with the with the ousting of the last president for example it was very inevitably visible how, how corruption or abuse of power and coercion through through um, cronyism so to speak um, is is still very common do you think this is the like the the other side of the medal that um, maybe Confucianism and some of its merits might have contributed to, to the economic rise of South Korea, but there's also still the same structure hinders it to, to become like a fully de developed democracy, if that exists at all. But um, I, I'd be curious about your thoughts on this. Yeah, well, that's that's a very difficult um, uh, thing. Um, you mentioned um, the uh, whether there were any changes during the colonial period. Uh, the, uh, the Japanese actually did not change anything. I mean, they they uh, they came to Korea and they didn't understand uh, how uh, Korean society really worked. Uh, there are some very interesting ethnographic uh, studies uh, made by J Japanese scholars uh, in Korea, which are uh, still very, uh, very in uh, important. But uh, what, uh, what uh, is more important actually in, in nowadays uh, that started already in the 60s, um, people moved from their villages into uh, into towns or, and uh, cities uh, because there uh, were uh, that uh, that was where the uh, 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 incumbent uh, uh, industries uh, uh, were settled. So people moved uh, there where they had work, of course. Um, and so you uh, you uh, saw already in the late 60s and especially then in the 70s, this exodus uh, to this urbanization, uh, because uh, you have to uh, think that in, in historical times, uh, uh, up to, I would say, up to 1945, uh, uh, Korea was an agrarian country. Uh, people lived uh, in the countryside. All the famous people, actually, uh, of the 50s and 60s were born in the countryside and not in Seoul. That changed then slowly. As I said, the urbanization um, was a very strong uh, power um, pull of uh, people away uh, from, the, uh, from the countryside. And of course, uh, not everybody um, was um, performing ancestor worship. In a sense, of course, uh, you know the, the so-called common people. In other words, not the aristocratic elite. They they did that to a certain extent, but in much smaller on a much smaller scale. Um, but um, even the descent groups I uh, I studied uh, in the countryside, uh, they lost a lot of members uh, to the cities. Um, you, you went uh, there also because you did not, not only had work, uh, but your, uh, your children could go to good schools uh, and so forth. Um, and so uh, the, this descent groups um, were kind of uh, torn apart. Many people went left and went uh, to urban areas like in Seoul, for example. And of course, these people knew uh, I, uh, my cousin and my cousin third degree, my cousin fifth degree also lived somewhere. And uh, if, uh, if this uh, kinship 
where ties were still strong, then people would come uh, get together even at Chusok or at um, uh, at the uh, New Year's or um, to to celebrate ancestors or of course then also uh, the smaller uh, the smaller ritual uh, of um, on the death day. Uh, that they uh, of your parents, father or mother, uh, people would come uh, together and uh, celebrate uh, uh, their uh, their uh, passing away. So uh, the the big many big uh, uh, descent groups or kinship groups uh, were thus kind of torn uh, apart. And it's uh, uh, now uh, now it's again um, there are great efforts made uh, by uh, large uh, descent groups like the Andong Kuan, like the Andong Kim, and so on uh, that uh, they uh, they uh, try to keep a kinship spirit um, by uh, by getting together uh, by uh, uh, compiling a common. Uh, uh, common genealogy uh, and so forth, and also by tending uh, ancestral graves. Of course, ancestral graves, uh, these are also in the, in the mountains. Uh, so uh, occasionally, uh, kinship uh, uh, kinsmen did gather in the, in the mountains uh, there where the ancestral graves are. Uh, and so that is also very important for these grave rituals. Um, where you know, people from many different uh, branches of a kinship group would come together and celebrate uh, their common ancestry. So it's it's a very uh, it's a very complicated thing. At first, in the 60s, 70s, uh, things um, were in the countryside still very strong, um, as I uh, say. I witnessed many many times uh, these. Uh, these ancestor worship in front of the ancestral shrine, um, but then uh, people left, and especially uh, those who are uh, um, uh, versed uh, in the ritual practice. The ritual practice uh, you have to uh, you have to uh, witness that actually from uh, from uh, childhood on uh, to uh, be, uh, to really know what to do uh, during these rituals. These are not just kind of um, you know according to what what you think a ritual is. There there are very strict um, uh, terms and models um, for uh, conducting uh, these rituals. And so uh, the, the so-called ritual heir, uh, the one who is, um, who, uh, who is leading uh, these um, rites, uh, he has to know a lot. And he actually should always be uh, there where the ancestral um, shrine is. So in the, in the main house, uh, what is called the Tonga. Um, no, and but that's very often now too. The young people do not want to stay there forever, uh, serving their ancestors. They want to uh, go and study uh, in Seoul or so, um, and uh, even abroad. Uh, and so the uh, the the tradition uh, is uh, is loosening. Uh, that is also what I uh, I witness. People do not understand anymore what kind what uh, this special kind of uh, of uh, move uh, in in a ritual really means. Uh, so I, I had some uh, inter interesting encounters in the countryside, not in in my uh, village. They were still very uh, conscious of um, of these um, rituals, uh, but in other places where I um, uh, where I. Uh, Kind of lectured uh, on uh, on these rituals, which I also, of course, studied through uh, documents. Uh, there are lots of documents on on these um, rituals. Uh, they are all in Chinese. People nowadays do not know Chinese anymore, uh, and so they are sometimes at a loss what to do. Uh, and so uh, it was quite interesting uh, that I, as a foreigner, would uh, kind of expl explain to them uh, how, what their background is and how you should do it and what it means. I, I saw at one time uh, they showed me what they were uh, reading, the, the, uh, uh, the ancestral uh, um, uh, 
German, so to speak, and uh, these people had had it only in Hangul in the uh, Korean script, uh, and had lost actually uh, the the knowledge of what it meant. Of course, they could read the Korean, uh, but it didn't make much sense anymore to them because they uh, they had I uh, didn't they didn't have uh, the knowledge of the Chinese characters anymore. And so I came and 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 uh, put the Chinese characters back and uh, kind of explained um, uh, how uh, what it really meant. And that is very difficult nowadays too. This is a very archaic language, uh, and uh, yeah, most of my uh, teachers uh, uh, who also explained it to me uh, they have passed away. And so uh, this whole generation, this whole uh, or generation of the in the, in the uh, who are now in the eighties or sometimes even in the nineties, of course, they are passing away. Uh, and somehow uh, the younger generation is not that uh, interested anymore in, in knowing all these uh, intricacies uh, of the ritual. We have two questions actually on the role of shamanism, um, about uh -huh. its role to bring in just a, another uh, kind of <laughs> ritual, right. exactly. Um, and the questions are, what is the role of shamanism in Korean society today? And the other mm -hmm. question is, um, a question about the role of shamanism in Korean ritual life and the role of women in these rituals opposed to the patriarchal teachings of Confucianism. That's interesting uh, uh, because I suppose I uh, I do show in my photo book, uh, my recent photo book, I have uh, some very uh, interesting uh, pictures on shamans. Shamanism actually in, in my time, uh, as, I mean my time in the in the 60s and 70s was very much a rural, uh, a rural uh, phenomenon. Uh, shamans you found uh, when you went uh, through uh, the countryside you heard the the clapping uh, of the of the gongs or uh, the uh, the striking of the drums uh, uh, from um, shaman good from shaman performances um, and um, shamanism is a very interesting and very contrary to uh, to confucianism where everything is written down uh, shamanism has very uh, very little uh, written things. Uh, it's it's an oral tradition, an uh, oral uh, um, shaman songs, for example. These are oral uh, oral tra tra traditions, and uh, and just because it is uh, it was never uh, kind of uh, limited uh, to certain uh, to certain uh, textual uh, sources. Uh, it could adjust um, uh, very easily even to urban areas. Uh, I would say that, of course, it's the, in the countryside uh, you still see uh, shamans, but the shamans kind of uh, uh, participated in the general urbanization of Korean society. And so you see shamans in, uh, in uh, Seoul, uh, well, not at every corner, but almost at every corner. There are very, um, very, um, very prominent uh, still. And you go to the shaman, uh, especially, of course, women. Uh, as you um, uh, probably noticed, uh, these Confucian, uh, Confucian rituals are male rituals. Ma uh, women have no part uh, in, in that at all. So they are excluded. Whereas in shamanism, the main actors, the main uh, uh, attendants uh, are all uh, women. Uh, the uh, special women uh, problems, they go to the shaman and the shaman uh, then uh, sees what's the problem, uh, the problem is. Um, so uh, it's, um, uh, it's, uh, it, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, in a way, a, a, a women's, a female um, um, religion, and it's very much, uh, it's still very much uh, alive, uh, even uh, in in present, uh, in present uh, uh, so-called modern society uh, in Seoul or any other uh, big uh, city like Busan or the Guangzhou, or wherever. 
um, you find, um, uh, and especially also, uh, although uh, modern medicine has uh, uh, is fantastic in uh, South Korea, but if you have uh, doubts about this, uh, about doubts about uh, injections and so on, you go first uh, to the uh, shaman and you ask and and you see and uh, many things uh, um, even modern uh, medicine cannot heal. Uh, so you uh, you need uh, a uh, a shaman performance uh, to uh, to really get behind uh, the the problem uh, behind. Uh, what the the reason is for, for example, that I don't sleep uh, at night, or uh, that uh, I uh, I uh, my ancestors come and disturb me or my family. Uh, I remember a case where um, a, uh, a a little baby was constantly crying and was. Uh, Totally, they couldn't do anything in a, in a Western hospital, and then they went um, to the shaman, and the shaman uh, looked at the baby and tried to find uh, the reason for this crying and crying, and then she found uh, that it was actually the hand of a deceased grandmother. That grandmother had wanted uh, to uh, see that uh, child. Uh, uh, before she died, but she died before the child was born. And so uh, the grandmother then uh, came as a ghost, of course, as a spirit, uh, and just touched the child just very lightly, just to see, ah, that, that's my grandchild. Uh, and, uh, and because she touched the child uh, as a spirit, uh, the child was uh, getting sick and was crying all the time. So uh, when uh, the shaman uh, made this connection uh, between the deceased uh, grandmother who had, uh, uh, had wanted so badly to see her grandchild, and the crying baby, uh, the this whole problem could be uh, could be resolved because uh, the grandmother then was especially uh, uh, feasted at this uh, shaman uh, performance, uh, and she was uh, uh, shown the baby, and then uh, uh, she was asked to really depart in the in the other world and leave the baby alone and from that point on on uh, the uh, the baby uh, stopped crying so there are uh, there are very very important and for many i i saw women uh, uh, with uh, problems of uh, family problems or a wayward son uh, who who is a drunkard or whatever and the shaman uh, is like a, a modern psychologist uh, who kind of tries then to uh, uh, to resolve uh, the problems uh, so it's a, it's a very important it's very it's still very important uh, well, a, a question that that follows that track uh, and when you say that the shamanism is still really present today the question is how do koreans balance these rituals and age old traditions with the drive in the past 50 years to rapidly modernize are there specific examples of lost traditions of course uh, that shamanism is not quite what it used to be because this this uh, uh, shaman uh, performances uh, used to uh, to last for a full day or even days uh, many days in in, uh, in consecutive days um, so nobody has the time anymore to attend such long uh, uh, things, and and uh, the un the unfortunate thing is, of course, in a way uh, that the government, the uh, Department of um, uh, Trade and um, and Tourism and so on, uh, they kind of discovered uh, shamanism as the original Korean religion. Uh, the the long before, of course, uh, Confucianism was there. There were shamans uh, in in Korea. So it's uh, the uh, the gov the gov government is now um, is now uh, saying, well, you see, uh, 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 Confucianism is is fine, but it's it's uh, it's receding uh, here. Shamanism, we have that, and there there are uh, government sponsored uh, goods and uh, performances. But uh, very, it, they 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 do not have the original 
spirit, of course, the spirit. Um, but uh, so, uh, whereas in my days in uh, in the sixties, I uh, attended uh, some um, uh, some big uh, shaman performances by very famous. Uh, famous shamans. And uh, of course, shamanism uh, under Pak Chung Hee uh, era in the 60s and 70s was actually prohibited. Uh, so uh, you were fined uh, if uh, the police uh, heard uh, that the, the shaman drums or so, uh, and that it was, was always very loud. And so you, you heard it from far away that there was a uh, performance uh, going on. And so uh, I remember that the, the first thing uh, people had to do uh, to, to bribe uh, the police uh, so that they just kind of uh, did not report anything uh, like, uh, like a, a could. Uh, and then of course the could, could go, uh, uh, could, uh, go on uh, just in the middle of, of, all the, uh, of all the houses and so on. Every, and nobody um, was really kind of, uh, uh, annoyed because it it belongs to uh, to the sound and even the smell um, of uh, of Korea. But uh, and then of course uh, nowadays uh, an, an important uh, aspect of shamanism uh, is uh, prophecy uh, to uh, to tell somebody do I do I. Uh, uh, succeed in my examinations? Do, uh, do I get uh, healthy again uh, when I have cancer? Do I have, and so on and so forth. For these kind of domestic problems, also uh, the uh, the shamans are uh, now uh, uh, used very much, and many shamans actually are not real shamans, but more fortune tellers. They tell the, uh, your fortune. Even uh, the the Shaman, um, I knew uh, quite uh, quite well. Also, um, told me my fortune, but my my uh, my past. Uh, she didn't want to uh, to talk about the future, <laughs> but she talked about the past, and I was surprised. Uh, she uh, looked at me, and somehow uh, she uh, she pretty much uh, uh, got, uh, got um, uh, and uh, and understood what I was and who I was. Uh, so that uh, was a very interesting. Uh, these uh, shamans are not, uh, uh, you know, they um, uh, some so-called modern people say, "Ah, it's all a nonsense. It's all uh, uh, it's it's uh, good for nothing." Uh, but uh, that is uh, really uh, that's really uh, a, a wrong uh, opinion and, and a wrong uh, wrong understanding of what uh, shamans really. Um, uh, mean in the world of women and women. <laughs>